Hello and welcome to another video. Now, this is going to be a very different kind of video today. Um, I was talking to my partner in crime, and Charlotte, and um, we were talking about how she, was, how she has a lot of knowledge about wine. Now, have you ever watched um, Saturday Kitchen? And you, there's a, what, always a wine expert, normally a guy called Ollie, and he, he doesn't have much time in this segment to talk about where the wine is, what's part of the great variety, all this stuff, how to smell it, how to taste it, how to do all that stuff about wine. And so I said to her, why don't you do this, you know? Rather than going to wine tastings, watch these videos and watch how you're supposed to like wine, what you're supposed to smell out the wine, how you're supposed to smell, how it's supposed to taste, what it's all about. So I'm going to introduce you to her girlfriend Charlotte now, and she's going to show you just how to learn about wine for a beginner. And also, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell, and uh, like this video because the like, the more likes we get, the more views we get according to the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. So, hello, I'm Charlotte, and I worked for a well-known chain of wine shops for several years. So I'm here to show you how to taste wine professionally. Uh, this is a Chardonnay slash Pinot Noir from Aldi, which I wouldn't massively recommend to be honest. We probably won't be getting it again. Um, it's the same grapes as going to Champagne. Uh, and it probably gives an idea of what Champagne would taste like um, if it hadn't been uh, secondary fermented and such. Pretty dire to be honest. But anyway, this is how you taste wine professionally. Um, obviously whether it's bad or not is just my subjective opinion, everyone's opinion differs about wine. Uh, so to start with we look at it in the glass and we can see it's clear, that's a good sign. A um, bit of condensation on the glass but it's definitely clear. And we can see that it's pale in colour and we can see it's yellow, that's quite standard but you know some wines might be more um, you know, white wines might be more yellowy green, um, but this is a clear pale yellow wine, so it's pale, that means it's probably quite young. This one's 2018, which is pretty standard for cheap plonk, I think it was £6. Um, I didn't buy it, someone else did. <laughs> um, but we're not fussy in this house, are we? So we'll drink £6 plonk. So it's clear and it's pale, very standard. Um, and then the most important thing actually is the smelling of it so obviously you probably don't fill your glass up quite so full you probably a bit less than this in order to not spill it everywhere when you start swirling it about um, and then swirling it obviously allows the aromas to come out a bit more and quite standard among wines is this one uh, smells of lemon and uh, pale, like sort of green apple, not pale, but green apple. Uh, that's quite a standard smells for a young white wine. Um, obviously if it was like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc it would probably be quite grassy, but this is kind of a Chardonnay. Um, mm. Not sure what proportion Chardonnay it is and what proportion Pinot Noir it is, but I'm guessing it's quite a lot Chardonnay, because it, it does have a, sort of a peachy smell also. But it's not like your typical New World Chardonnay um, and very like peachy. It's more lemony and green apple-y to be honest. So we can smell it and you know it smells good and it may well be a very very tasty wine. Um, and then we drink it, yay! Um, we slurp it uh, in order to get the air into it a bit so that uh, the flavours come out more. and run it all around the mouth because there's all sorts of different taste buds all over your mouth so upon having it in the mouth for quite a while you'll realise quite often with white wines that they're really quite acidic or well, this one particularly which is unusual for Australian wine um, so you can taste acidity most on the tip of your tongue so If you, put, if you leave a bit on the tip of your tongue for a while, you can tell it's quite acidic, it um, kind of stings a bit. So the first thing you think about is uh, how acidic it is. Uh, this is just to analyse the wine, you know, and 
kind of to decide whether it's a good wine but obviously that's like subjective to yourself so the first of all you think about the acidity and then you think about the tannin which is present in red wines but this being a white wine doesn't have any tannin uh, I mean there may be one or two white wines that have a tiny bit of tannin a very bitter taste but generally they go with the red colour uh, and after we think about the tannin we think about the alcohol um, how much it burns the back of your throat and mouth is uh, indic indicative of how much alcohol it's got uh, so it just depends you know when you get used to tasting a whole range of wines how much the burn is compared to other wines but most white wines are probably about 13 and a half percent I think this one is judging by the standard sort of oh it's only 12 and a half percent actually um, yeah that that is indicated by probably the high levels of acidity we first noticed because the more acidic a wine then potentially the less alcohol it's got uh, and also the lighter bodied it is going around the glass that we saw at the beginning uh, the lighter the body then probably the less alcohol it's got uh, so it's quite a young wine and quite high in acidity and not very high in alcohol really at 12 and a half percent that's about as low as they get um, so after we consider the alcohol we consider the body and as we've said it's um, not very high in body which goes with the alcohol um, and then we consider the flavour um, which is as I said uh, because most of taste is in smell it, it's mostly lemon and green apple to be honest this one uh, nothing really else indicates itself to you on the palate uh, so it's just, I guess now I consider it at length, it's not that unpleasant, but sorry Aldi, it's not one of your finest. Um, and sorry James. But uh, yeah, the flavour, lemon and green apple, simple. But obviously if you've got a much more expensive wine, you'd probably notice a lot more flavours in there. You probably would have been able to pick them up on the nose when you smelled it. And that gives you the anticipation, you know, to look forward to a really good glass of wine. Uh, and a, a key indicator of whether a wine's good as well is how long the pleasant flavours stay with you in the mouth. Um, and these are gone quite soon really, just leaving a sort of sour taste. Um, so yeah, that finishes off the uh, the flavour. And then finally, the intensity. And, and it doesn't last very long on the palate, uh, thankfully. Uh, so thanks for... Um, uh, listening and uh, we'll get back to finishing off this bottle of plonk and move on to the next one. Thank you. Bye. Yes. So what did you think about that review? It's the first one. It could be the first of many. It depends whether you guys like this review. This is basically the standard um, how to taste, how to smell, how to um, take in all the um, scents and the, what wine basically consists of. Um, if you like this video, give it smash that like button, don't forget to subscribe down there. And also, more importantly, comment, tell me, tell us what other wine you think you'd like us to um, review. Or oh, not me, the uh, lovely Charlotte, how to, what what she would like to uh, her, um, for her to review. Tell you how to smell it, what she thinks about it. And who knows, if it gets a decent amount of views, she might, she might do it. Um, if it's not too expensive as well, we're not paying out for really expensive wine this is for people that don't go to places these high-end wine shops these people who go to the regular shops like Aldi, Lidl, Asda that type of thing not expensive so if you like it anyway like squad thanks again for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you all very very soon goodbye